Did the Lakota Language Consortium give us back our grandmother's intellectual property? They gave us copies, but that's not what we're asking. We want all the rights to them, the copyrights, the licensing, the distribution, publication, all the authorities, so that they can't take her work and profit off of it anymore. Here are some examples of how they're still doing that, despite our family's wishes. Just to recap, they are a state-based nonprofit out of Indiana. Their waivers give them unrestricted permission to copyright and or use in all current or future format. Being a state-based nonprofit, these waivers are validated through state courts. They sell this stuff in their dictionary, our dictionary. It's compiled by this guy. This guy makes the money as well as this guy now. That guy from Austria makes a lot of money. But anyway, this is how they use our data. This is why we need data sovereignty. Elders will record, fill out their waiver. Not sure if they're given true informed consent, then they'll put it in their books. <laughs> Then they put it in their book and sell it. I cut that sentence off, but that's the full, full thing she says. What's interesting though is they always talk about how I'm trying to discredit her work and erase her work, but they never cited her. They never honored her. This is something academics are supposed to do. We can keep going, but you get the point. So despite our family's wishes, Sandy Rock Resolution 150-22, which explicitly asserts our intellectual property rights in perpetuity, our rights to retain all copyrights to our language, and that we retain exclusive inherent authority to collect, store, maintain, use, and protect our own sacred languages. The Lakota Language Consortium, an Indiana state-based nonprofit, continues to sell our language. One thing too about informed consent, it can be taken away.